All right, can everybody see my uh, screen? Yes. All right, so I'll go ahead and mute you all now then, see if I can get that done so that we don't have to worry about that. But thanks for that feedback, ladies. So I'm gonna mute you and I'll unmute you towards the end of the presentation. See if I can do a, a good job here so that we don't have any sounds. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about EMS and the Wave Watch. Now this is a big, big, big topic. I can't even begin to tell you how big a topic it is. And of course you already know because I'm really talking to the, uh, you know, singing to the choir as it would be. And most of you know so much about this and have educated me on so many things. Uh, can you hear me correctly? Everybody here? You yes. can unmute yourself if you need to, thank you. Okay, so um, the EMFs are one of the most important things that we could be paying attention to today. And of course, there's many theories out there about what is going on, but it is very important. Now, I thought I had enough information today that I wasn't going to give you a lot of information about the wave watch like I normally do. I'm just gonna remind you that there are frequency sets that are eight minutes. There are some that are 15. There are some that are over 30. Some of the coronavirus frequency sets are an, you know, an hour and five minutes. So those are all different types and lengths of frequency sets. And the longer the frequency, the more frequencies that I have packed into it. And usually every eight minutes, the sound of it will change. So just a little bit about it there. And then, of course, we do want to be careful. Uh, I can't make any claims and say this is a medical tool. Uh, the FDA, in a very unusual God way, has kind of looked at my uh, uh, wave watch and my and my website and told me that it is acoustical frequencies and those can't be regulated, but I still have to be careful on things that I uh, do say. So anyway, to continue, um, EMFs, we're all getting very familiar with that word, but once in a while I still have somebody that goes, what's that, you know? So that's short for electromagnetic radiation. It's something that all modern technology, anything has on it. And everything that is electrical power, also our houses emit electromagnetic frequencies. So it is all around us and it's been building and building and building since you know, the 1900s, uh, early 1910 you know, and 20s, we started having uh, things going on with um, different kinds of frequencies. And some of you will probably recognize that we started having health problems then too. So there is a huge connection with what people think could be going on with that. So I bet there isn't one person on that doesn't know four or five different types of technology they have in their home that is emitting EMFs. Now, believe it or not, I kind of uh, wanted to share with you that these frequencies are man-made. And so I tried to kind of give you a different picture here today and see the jagged edges. That's kind of how I feel that these frequencies are. They're not normal. They don't, uh, our body doesn't recognize them very good. It causes our body problems. And so that's why I have the weird little kind of a, you know, screen up here to kind of show you how I feel that some of these frequencies uh, could be. And uh, the World Health Organization lists these types of radiation as a class 2B carcinogen. And uh, in 2018, a U.S. national toxicology program's $30 million study found clear evidence that mobile phone radiation led to an increased rate of cancer and genetic damage in mice, but they may not be telling us that, you know, so there it's very, very quiet and we have to be doing our own research. And I know most of you have been doing that, but EMFs, it's a huge, huge concern. Some people are in the dark and some people are really educated about it, but it's everywhere. We're being bombarded. We can't see it. We can't feel it. We don't know much of, because we're not recognizing it sometimes. Some people are not. Um, I think one of the neatest um, ladies who has been talking about it 
is on TED Talks, and then she has very uh, many uh, programs on the internet, and she's written some books, of course, uh, is Dr. Davis, and she's an epidemiologist and an international expert on mobile phone radiation. And I just wanted to make sure that you uh, are familiar with her name so that you could look her up if you wanted some more information about it. And she's basically saying that there's a dirty secret that they're telling us that things are pretty good, you know, with the cell phones, that there's not a lot of problems with them, uh, but that they're testing them incorrectly. So all kinds of tests, it's embarrassing. So they're tested away from the body and inside a holster. So that's how they are coming up with the statistics that cell phones don't really hurt us because they're not testing them like we wear them. And then another thing that she said in another talk, you know, was that they actually um, test them. Um, they know possibly that within 10 years that there could be some radiation that's adding up from the use of cell phones, but their tests are assuming that we use them once a week for a small text or a phone call. And obviously the statistics are that people are using their cell phones three to four hours a day. Not everybody, but some people are. But the statistics they're testing on or the information they're looking at is using that we just use them once a week, you know. So very, very poor uh, manipulated figures on the testing that we're using. So Europe did do a little bit different testing and they do, do say that the radiation is not within safe levels. It's up to four times more radiation than we need. And they tested it, obviously, when we were touching the cell phone or it was closer to our body. So lots and lots of new things are going on here. Can everybody still see my screen? It changed uh, screens on me. Hope everybody can still see that. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So this is Dr. Davis. And um, sorry, the picture is just a little bit unclear. But she basically um, also tells us that melatonin helps to counter and repair damage to EMFs. So, you know, she's got a little bit of information and then she has a lot of information and it can just go on and on and on for hours if you wanted to pick through it. But of course she's saying, don't use your devices directly before sleep as this interferes with your sleep pattern and uh, uh, electromagnetic frequency damage. And then another great thing I got from her was the uh, website showthefineprint.com. And this website breaks down the fine print about our cell phone and lists the potential dangers of cell phones. And of course, it's very carefully written by the phone company so that they are not, quote unquote, they're, they're giving you some information, but they're not going to get themselves in trouble and, you know, be um, open to lawsuits. But there are possibilities there because of that. So I thought that was a great site, showthefineprint.com. And I haven't got to look at it as much. I just happened to see it at the tail end of learning uh, some of her YouTubes. But many, many uh, statistics. Uh, she keeps continually breaking it down and just giving us information on how dangerous the cell phones are. And she herself was one of those that said that, oh, I don't think they're dangerous. And then she had a grandchild. And all of a sudden, that theory changed. So I think I was so glad that, that woke her up and she's sharing that information readily with us. Okay, so next slide, basically information. I don't know if anybody of you remember this, but Star Trek, I remember from you know 30 years ago, some kind of an episode, and I used to have the, the number of the exact episode and the name of it, but basically the children were stolen from the ship and they were taken to another world where, that, where they couldn't reproduce anymore. And so the whole episode was to search for a solution to the problem. And of course, 
the problem was that that civilization had placed towers all over their world to communicate. Isn't that kind of eerie? Doesn't that sound familiar? And so I am just enamored with that. And I'm so sorry, I couldn't find the exact um, episode that it was so I could share it and actually see it again myself. But it's out there somewhere. <laughs> and uh, it's reminding us that things are happening. So there is a miscarriage connection. And it was published in Nature magazine in 2017. So women who expose themselves to higher levels of EMFs had a 2.72 greater risk of miscarriage. So I don't know any mothers nowadays that haven't been exposed to cell phone radiation or radiation of any kind. So if you are looking at the birth statistics, they're getting worse and worse. And of course, we've had that um, problem lately in our society. And I'm going to try to pick my words very, very careful. But we've had that problem and uh, lots of miscarriages from that. And so I'm again reminded of the Star Trek episode where we could be doing ourselves in. So we do need to be paying attention to so many of the things that we could be doing. I think I've skipped one. I'm trying to look for it. There, there it is. Um, so hundreds of high quality peer reviewed scientific studies link exposure to negative health outcomes. Although again, uh, it's not being admitted anywhere. So cancer, DNA damage, infertility, leakage of the blood brain barrier, depression, diabetes, heart regularities are already connected in many, many areas with the cell phone usage, the uh, microwave usage, everything that we have in our homes. You know, it just goes on and on. Uh, you know, we now have um, our homes all regulated. They open and they close and we can talk to uh, <laughs> Amazon. We can talk to Siri. We can talk to anybody that we want to, Alexa. And it just goes on and on. So we all know that we have many types of problems in our homes. So I'm skipping again because I skipped that one. Now here's an image. I actually didn't take this, but some of you do know that I do thermography. And so I was really thrilled to find this picture. Uh, this is uh, somebody's head, obviously, and uh, 15 minutes after cell phone use. So you can see all the inflammation and the more and the more and the more inflammation that we use, the statistics, quote unquote, seem to have gone up. There were statistics years ago that um, they had started training more doctors to be able to work with brain cancer. But Dr. Davis is actually saying there's a hope that that isn't going to materialize as bad as they thought because we're doing a little bit more texting and we're paying attention to it. Because 10 years ago, when we started with cell phones or 15 or whatever the number is when you actually started using the cell phone, uh, we could just put it up to our ears. And now there's many different ways to use that. So hopefully we are not... Um, having as much radiation close to our head, but we've got to be conscientiously using something so it is not up to our head all the time. But again, it can cause huge inflammation and that continues to build over the years. So I think this picture is worth a thousand words, like they say. Okay. I, thought this, I thought this was the simplest way to say something. The cell phone, affects both the sperm and the brain. <laughs> and this has to do with the fatty nature of both of those body parts. So huge connection there when we actually think about it. We ex absorb toxins through our skin. Read them in. Read them in. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can maybe mute people again. I'm not sure people again, I'm not sure. Hope that helped a little bit. So we absorb toxins through our skin and these toxins are caught by protective coating 
But then when we're exposed to radiation, the absorption is amplified and those fatty storage toxins are, have many, many toxins in them. And we have a problem with that overload of toxins. And because the fat attracts the toxins, the EMFs amplify it <laughs> and make us especially susceptible. So think about our younger kids, their brains aren't fully myelinated. They don't have enough fat in, uh, on them or, or a coating until they reach their mid twenties. And so their brains are very, very vulnerable about it. So there have been warnings and hopefully most parents are fairly good about watching their children's uh, exposure to the cell phones and to the gaming things, but it's very, very hard to do that. I know. And I'm, I, I hate to say it. I'm glad it, I'm not a parent. I'm glad my kids are older and I didn't have that problem. I didn't have to be a referee for all of those uh, technology tools that our younger uh, kids are so enamored with today. So the same way with our reproductive systems, they're also very vulnerable to the EMS because of that fatty toxin connection. Now, here's what scientific evidence we've been given. And I don't know if I need to read all of this or not. I tried to put it in big print. But the FDA says there is no consistent, credible scientific evidence of problems caused by exposure to radio frequency energy emitted by cell phones. <laughs> so 5G will use frequencies that are already covered in their current federal guidelines. So it does not raise any new safety concerns in the opinions of the regulatory agencies in the US. I think we also take a deep breath on that one. That one's a little hard for anybody to swallow, I would think. Um, there is no, on the left side, there's no known mechanism by which emissions of these frequencies could cause DNA damage and cause cancer, according to the National Cancer Institute. But, you know, we have billions of people is what they're saying that have no increase in cancer rates. Are you kidding? <laughs> cancer rates are going out the, the sky, you know? So I'm sorry I didn't take the time to kind of locate that, that uh, stati particular statistics on how cancer rates have increased, but they have been increasing, increasing steadily for years. And the last I heard it was like one in every 3.2 persons could expect to have cancer in their lifetime. And what would that statistic have been in the 1900s? So, you know, we are really being um, exposed is a really good word. We are exposed to this particular information and we are supposed to believe that. So you can go either way. But I want to tell you specifically in my office, some of you do know that I work with women's breast health. My other business is called BRAS, B-R-A-S, Breast Research Awareness and Support. And I started that when both my mother and sister uh, were diagnosed with breast cancer at the same time. So over the last 15 years, I've worked with a lot of women. And I've seen this just blows me away. I had a lady come in who was wearing her cell phone in her bra and she was diagnosed with three kinds of cancer underneath that area where she wore it. Another lady had her cell phone in, a, in her pocket for work and she felt, you know, she had to do it. That was the only place she could wear it. It was directly over, uh, you know, her um, rep reproductive area. And within a short period of time, she had a large ovarian cyst just from that cell phone in that pocket very easily. But the one that scares me the most is an older lady that was like 84 something uh, years old. And she was wearing her lifeline alert or life alert. And she was a little bit crippled. So I don't know if you can see me enough, but you know, she bent over even when she was setting or eating or walking, she, you know, she couldn't hold her head up and she was bent over. So her lifeline alert hung over one of her breasts directly. It was not in the center of her chest. It was over her breast. And she had breast cancer within a year under a lifeline alert or a life alert. So I 
don't believe everything that we are supposed to believe, you know, because I've seen it. And I just hope that people are really paying attention and that you're able to share this with your loved ones or help your grandchildren out or whatever it need be, because this is real and there are problems from it. Now, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to make some connections for you and make it easy to see. I know all of you are probably doing all of this, but just in case this could be good for somebody or you could share this with somebody, I, you know, I've got it down for you. But these are five easy ideas, obviously. Don't carry your cell phone in your pocket or your bra, obviously. Uh, don't use, use your laptop in your lap. And it's so sad that they call it a laptop because so many younger men you know, it's on their lap. If you have to put it in your lap, at least try to put some kind of protection. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but there are some things that you could do for that. Obviously don't sleep with your phone. I don't know how many mothers I've come, have come into my office who talk about their teenage uh, girls and boys actually sleeping with their cell phones. And some of those girls are wearing their bras all night long and then that cell phone is tucked into that bra. And I'm just going, ah, don't do that. You know, it's amazing. So they shouldn't, it shouldn't even be touching their skin, let alone all night long. Uh, it shouldn't even be in the room. And we've talked about that before, but please make some effort to change those ideas or to educate people if you know somebody who's doing that. I also think the wireless earbuds are bad, bad, bad. Um, they should not, they're direct line from uh, EMFs right into your brain. The brain has an open hole for the ear. So there's no other way to think about it. Uh, and don't buy smart tech you don't need, you know. Uh, I'm kind of amazed when I visit somebody and I'm, I'm hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes, but I know several people that are really trying to be careful with uh, EMFs, but they have an Alexa in their home, you know, and I'm just uh, don't know what to say. You know, I'm trying to be very polite, but it's like that thing is on all the time. It's sitting right beside you. Plus the fact that it's listening to everything you say, that gives me the creeps, but that's just my opinion, you know? So uh, everybody has a need, you know, maybe that would actually be a little bit better for somebody than wearing the life alert. So we all have to make some decisions sometimes because we have people with different uh, limitations. And so, you know, when I throw that out, it might make sense for somebody who is in a uh, precarious situation and might need some help very quickly. But again, you're gonna have to weigh how important is the lifeline alert versus the Alexa or something along those lines if you have an elderly one that might need some kind of protection. And here's another way to think of it. Just instead of saying five things, you could just say two easy ideas, minimize your EMF technology and distance yourself. So have you, heard of that six foot rule before? <laughs> I think we all have. Stay six feet away from people. Well, six feet away from your phone is actually a good idea too. And you know, I actually heard something and I'm not sure if I should repeat it, but I think I should be okay. But you know, we can be tracked quite a bit easier if our cell phones and we're walking six feet apart, uh, we can be tracked. That's a really good way to say it. But I'm still saying it makes sense to keep your cell phone six feet away from you. Uh, we're talking about at night, we're talking about during the day, it shouldn't be on your lap. You know, you should be doing lots of different things to it. It should be turned off. It should be in airplane mode. The list goes on and on and on that uh, what we need to be doing. Um, this is a quick chart. I really wasn't for sure that I could even you know, explain everything about it, but it just gives us some ideas, you know, of where our mobile phones are on that screen. And so TV, mobile phones, Wi-Fi are all up in that um, a, a particular area in megahertz. And then we actually have, you know, X-rays and gamma rays and things like that, invisible light all the way on the other side. And, but I thought that was kind of an interesting chart that might give you an idea about some of our technology and all of the sources of radiation that we have. But I think what's even more important 
is that um, there are many sources of radiation from our cell phones. And I hadn't really thought about this until I was preparing this today. I've just been saying, oh, you know, your cell phone uh, has radiation, but it's many kinds and many sources. So our voice calls have a sound, uh, or excuse me, maybe not a sound, but they have a different radiation. Our mobile data is a completely different source of radiation. Our Wi-Fi is a different source of radiation. It's different. The frequencies would be different. So they're all kind of adding up because the, none of these frequencies are natural man-made frequencies. God didn't make any of these frequencies. It's not like it's a stone setting there that God made that has this frequency. These are man-made frequencies that we've messed with. So of course, GPS has its own frequency system. Wireless charging. And then anything like our Apple Pay, the NFC type things, all have different sources, different amounts of frequency, different kinds. And think back to that very first picture I showed you that was all kind of like a, you know, just a brush stroke across the blue and a blob. And again, that's how I picture that radiation. It's just very, very um, messed up. It's not a beautiful source of frequencies like God has made. I actually could see the frequencies that I use on the wave watch. And uh, you could see a representation of them. And some of them would almost look like lace and they were just beautiful. They all had, you know, a particular um, different frequency, obviously for each of the 850 different ideas, but they were beautiful. And you'll find that in nature, that many measurements and, uh, you know, even Tesla's 369 number system and things like that, they all make beautiful na natural type ideas and products. But again, man-made things are a blob. They are not perfect. They are not in nature. So that might be another way to think of that. Now. Yeah. I have worked hard on the wave watch, but it was very hard to find, you know, there's not frequency after frequency after frequency for the wave watch about EMFs. But I am very pleased that I was able to put something on almost two years ago and three years ago when I started developing it. So I do have a frequency set uh, in the detox uh, area. And you would just swipe the screen, obviously, to get to detox. And then it says EMF and electrosmog detox. And then another one says radiation detox. So those are the ones that I have right now. And of course, I'm always learning and trying to add to that. So there might be a you know, possibility that, that I will find something more. But at this time, those are the two main ones. And then I'm always seeing that people say, oh, my emotions are so much better when I play those emotions ones. And the organs would be another idea because we know that those emotions are going to bother the women's reproductive systems, the men's reproductive system. It can obviously bother our ears. It can cause headaches. Uh, the list is actually endless for some of the symptoms that we could be having that could be from EMFs and, you know, putting a cell phone up to our ear and being in a room right next to the TV, setting too close to the TV, uh, setting with your laptop on your lap, the list just goes on and on. So you might have to think outside the box and say, oh, I have a headache. Maybe I could try that EMF detox and see if that does anything for you. So these are a couple of uh, testimonies that I've gotten. And I thought it was really interesting because it, it's the opposite of what I just mentioned, but somebody had anxiety and she used EMFs and it really uh, ten, tended to go away. And she calls it a, her go-to. When she's anxious, she'll play the EMF frequencies. So another testimony was somebody that's saying, you know, she's tired all the time, she's sleeping all the time. And I wish we could show, you know, have a show of hands, which we might hear in a minute. Uh, and you can tell that's the old teacher in me, you know, I always want to see a show of hands. But 
so many people have been telling me that they are just absolutely tired and sleeping all the time, just like this lady. And that when she played the EMF and the radiation detox almost daily, she seemed to do much better. Now that's not a scientific study, but why wouldn't you try it? If you've got the wave watch, you can do that very, very easily. So hopefully in a few minutes, we'll have some more testimonies. Maybe somebody's gotten something else from that. Then to kind of go back a little bit to where we're getting some of these from, um, we're seeing people who were having fatigue, breathing problems, and again, the headaches when the 5G rolled out. Now, I don't know how many of you were on, uh, it seemed like it was February, and something was said about 5G causing these particular problems. And, you know, we had somebody in Florida say, yep. We had somebody in California say, yep. You know, we had somebody in Montana, yep. Uh, that kind of thing. And all of us tended to think that in our area, they were doing something with the 5G and we were having those problems. And I know I specifically was having the fatigue and the breathing problems. And so, very, very interesting because sometimes we don't know when the 5G rolls out. Now, I am going to apologize just a little bit because I have been searching for a chart and it is a little bit alternative ideas, but there are there is a chart out there that uh, lets us know uh, when some of our um, our technology rolled out you know, starting in like 1913, they were saying that radio waves started, I'm not sure I'm getting this all quoted, but you know, and then uh, what happened in the 1940s, what happened in the 50s, and they particularly had it all charted as to when specific types of uh, 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 5G, you know, 4G, 3G, 2G, when all of those rolled out. And I could not find that. I spent 30 or 40 minutes trying to find a chart to show you. And if anybody has seen that chart or has a copy of it, that would be great. But they are putting that chart out where claims are being made. And maybe I shouldn't say claims, but where um, ideas are being brought up that the more 5G, the more uh, gigahertz, megahertz, you know, all the hertz that rolled out that wasn't within our normal range, uh, that wasn't a natural range, that was man-made, that as these rolled out more and more, that we seem to get sicker and sicker, and that there could have been a connection with some of the uh, different problems that we had with different, um, again, I'm looking for maybe a word, different uh, pandemics that were happening for many, many years. So huge connection. And again, I, I am apologizing because I couldn't find the chart that I wanted to show you that I've seen. So if anybody has that or knows where that is, maybe we can uh, point women to that or point everybody to that if they're interested in it. Now, the Wave Watch has some things. You can wear it all day long. You can wear it at night. Uh, obviously, you're going to turn your uh, EM off, excuse me, you're going to turn your Wi-Fi off at night. And I don't think I need to mention all of these, you know, for everybody, but, you know, we'll try to uh, bring a few things uh, into the scene. But I love stones. Stones are one of my favorite things for EMF protection. And that's, that's because they're God given, you know, and they can measure those stones. They know which stones have frequencies that kind of balance, uh, interact some way, negate whatever words you want to say. So these are the top 10 stones for EMF protection. And I don't know if you can see, but I just, I just love stones. I have a lot of different ones. And hey, ladies, it's a perfect excuse to get a, you know, a necklace that matches everything that you have. So you can have different necklaces, you know, and I've got different bracelets. Uh, I also have little diamonds in my ears because diamonds are a girl's best friend. And all this basically, I think, is backed up because I do have a sticker on the back of my phone. So I'm hoping that you're, you're being able to see that right now. So I have a sticker on the back of my phone, and it's actually made of a layer of quartz. So quartz is one of the best things that you can use. Any quartz stones, if you can't remember this, this one, but obviously you're going to go somewhere with your cell phone if you're looking for some stones, or you could go online. 
and you could see a list of stones that are great for EMF protection. But the, if you just remember quartz, so anything that's quartz is really good for EMF protection. So I even have, you know, a, a, a slice, an agate slice, and I keep this for my water. Actually, it purifies my water too. I think that's kind of interesting, but I can put my cell phone on this in my office. I have thicker slices of this to, you know, put my cell phone on different areas around my house. I think I need that. Or it's just sitting there for decoration. So lots of things you can do. And then everywhere I have a laptop in my office, I have natural stones there. I have natural stones underneath my bed, um, you know, next to my, um, on my uh, nightstand, although I don't put my cell phone there, I still have those natural stones there to try to protect me. So I think I've had the most fun with um, stones for EMF protection. Now, this is just a sampling of EMF protection devices. There are so many of them. I was overwhelmed. Um, I have you know, some that I have in my office, but there's so many different brands that you can buy. Like this particular set here that's on the screen, I think that whole set was $905. So that's why I like the stones. I can find them quite a bit. Uh, very affordable by going to rock shows and having fun with those. And, you know, I really wanted to do a research project one time to see how the health was of people who actually owned rock stores or gym stores. I thought they're surrounded by perfect frequencies all day long. You know, that would seem to me like they would be in pretty good health, but I didn't know, and I didn't have money for a double blind study on that. But uh, again, my favorite idea is some of those stones, if you're interested in that. And then here's some different technology. And I always consider or say to you, muscle test, uh, put your product on, stand in front of your computer, or hold your cell phone, stand in front of your TV after you've given that uh, device four or five minutes to kind of activate, and then see if your body is a little bit stronger. And so I have seen that several times. I've returned a couple, but most of the stuff I wear because I do extremely like it. So Altera, the one I have on the next screen is one that I have tested. And uh, I was in front of my TV and without anything in my house uh, plugged into any plugins, when I stood in front of my TV, I was definitely, you know, having some reactions to that. My body was not strong like it needed to be with testing, uh, muscle testing or kinesiology. And so then I plugged in the Altera, which is supposed to be a whole house product. And that one costs about $80. And it's supposed to go through every plug in on your whole house so that when I use my hairdryer, that because it's plugged in, it's giving me radiation. But because I have the Altera in my home, it is supposed to protect it. And as far as I can tell with my muscle testing, it is OK. But I'm not saying it's perfect. So you would want to check whatever you are deciding on to use. But you should hopefully be using something for your uh, ideas. So some more protection ideas that I think are just unbelievable. Baby blankets. I never thought about that, but I don't know what they do for the baby's head because the head is what's really exposed the most and uh, needs the most problems. So maybe I missed something on that. Uh, I also saw some men's boxers all set up for uh, protection. Uh, ladies, we don't want to have wires in our bras. They know for sure the testing was done right here in Kansas City that these uh, underwires are acting like antennas and they're actually pulling in EMF frequencies. And those frequencies have been tested to mess up testosterone, therefore the men's connection, and estrogen in women. So huge connections with some of the things that we wear. So uh, there's also an EMF protection paint. Uh, it's black, so I'm not, I have not used it myself. I have had somebody that told me that they used it. So I'm not sure, for sure 
what the final idea was uh, safe to paint over it because it is black paint. So I do not know about that, but you want to check that very carefully before you decided to do that. And then they have something uh, called Faraday cages that go over your bed. And basically those are, um, they kind of look like a, a mosquito netting, you know, that could go over your bed. And it's a very fine woven fabric that has silver or maybe copper in it to protect those. And so Faraday was the first person, I don't know his first name, but uh, Mr. Faraday, Dr. Faraday maybe, uh, was the first person in the 1850s, I think I saw was the date, who actually uh, saw some technology there uh, uh, to develop a Faraday cage. And then of course, I've already mentioned the whole house neutralizers that are very, very important for uh, using no matter what particular brand that you get. Um, I think I had whole house neutralizers with a different brand and they were over $450. So I know everybody has a budget, but it's a really good idea to protect your house in some way. Now, we could go on and on. There is a list of supplements. People might have some supplement ideas, but iodine is by far my favorite supplement. And I wish I would have taken a picture of my office. I have 50 bottles of iodine. It's my favorite selling thing, especially at the moment, because it's so good for everything. It's good for all kinds of pathogens, especially viruses. And there's information that it kills uh, COVID and coronavirus and different kinds of viruses, especially uh, by making a nasal spray and 15 seconds, there is information that it kills that in your nose. And when you gargle with it, swish with it, it's supposed to kill it in about a minute. But the reason it connects with um, basically uh, what we're talking about today is our thyroid in some instances. So we know that if there's any problems with radiation or a nuclear accident, that iodine is our go-to to be able to protect our thyroid. Well, what some of us may not realize is that every cell has an iodine receptor. So if we do not have enough iodine in our bodies, those receptors are filled with chlorine, fluoride, bromine, and mercury. So our cell is going to be filled up with something. And that's why you want to fill them up with iodine like they're supposed to be filled up with. We have iodine receptors. Let's make sure that we have enough iodine to fill those receptors up. So it is hugely important uh, at this point in time because we are protecting ourselves from radiation. That's what this is all about. So in my opinion, the Wave Watch is one of the easiest, of course. Uh, and you may say, oh, I, you know, she's going to say that that's her product. But it is easy, you know, and then the whole house supplement or excuse me, the whole house, the Altera, you plug it in. It takes you 15 seconds and you're not worrying about it. So that's a good one. And then iodine is my favorite thing for that. So it's very important that we learn a few ideas and just start and keep adding as we can keep learning. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing about our cell phones. I chose not to go to 5G last time my phone broke down. I still have a 4G, but I can tell that they're phasing that out. It's not working as good as it used to, and there's some problems with it. So, you know, we may have to make some decisions later on. And, you know, I didn't have time to, um, you know, to mention that there's, um, you know, cases for your watch. There's all kinds of different clothing. Uh, I've had a couple people in my office who were very, very sensitive to um, wearing, or excuse me, they were very, very sensitive to EMFs. And so they had basically a, a raincoat on, a rain hat and a raincoat is what it looked like to me. And it was woven like a Faraday cage was. It had silver in it and it was fairly expensive, but these problems were having, or these people were having so many problems with it that it was uh, a have to in their situation. They were having some tremors and you know the list goes on and on of all the illnesses and problems that they were having because of exposure. Uh, to EMFs. So I think I've kind of wound down. I'm going to press some buttons and let us all uh, give us, uh, you know, some time to visit, to give uh, some testimonies, if you would. 
and maybe to ask some questions. So I'll see if I can punch some buttons here. So here we go. Okay, so if anybody has any suggestions or would like to. Linda, hi, it's Joan. Hi, Joan. Um, get, when you get, get you on the screen. I wear, when I wear earplugs, like from my phone, I've heard that the radiation can go through the wires and that there's special earphones that prevent that. Well, you'd have to study that because I don't know which ones they might be, but definitely um, there are problems with some of them, you know, so. Okay. You would want, do you know which ones you were thinking were good? No, I just read it somewhere and I thought, okay, how do you determine which ones are, you know, no radiation through the wires and how do you determine which ones have radiation through the wires? Right. And I do not know. So that would be for you to, you know, you'd have to make sure you knew which ones you wanted to use because okay. most of them are saying they are not uh, correct. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm having trouble with my screen. There's always something every time. <laughs> so. so how about Bluetooth speakers like the Apple Bluetooth headphones? They are not supposed to be good either. They are putting a uh, man-made frequencies right into your ears. Yeah, makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. I got a headache from the um, Facebook. As soon as it turned on, I got a headache. So I put on your EMF and uh, damped it down. Oh, wow, that's a fun one. Yeah, yeah. I was also curious about um, the- Finally, uh, took me. Yeah, I was curious about, um, there are things on the wave watch like there's an a b thing that changes color is there someplace i can go to find out what all those different things mean yes i have been telling people but that that a b doesn't work uh for anything that we're using this is a really fancy music player you know and what that is for like my son's a musician if he wants to learn a small line in a song you can start from point a to point b and then it'll just loop it so that he can memorize that line of the song and get all the notes right, you know. So there really isn't an instance that I can see or even that we can set it because most people want to play, you know, 15 different frequencies and keep looping them. And I haven't been able to get that uh, any setting for that. So the AB is not something that we need to worry about. It. Okay. And why does it, why do things change color on the, on the uh, watch? I mean, because, it, you know, it's like you might tap it and just keep tapping it until you get to the the uh, icon on the left that you want to use. So you, as it taps, it changes color. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So I haven't received my uh, wave watch yet. And so I haven't even started to try to learn how to use it, but I'm pretty useless at new technology. So is there a quick, easy setup? How easy is it going to be to put on, turn on? press something and start using it. Yes, uh, you're gonna have a 20 page booklet that comes with it. And then also while you're waiting for it, you might go online. You should have received an email and some links to click into there. Uh, there's YouTube videos that show, you know, exactly how to set it and use it. And so you could start watching some of those if you wanted before you get it. But, okay. um, you know, you are uh, able to just uh, hold it on the side and uh, hold a button for three seconds to turn it on. And then there's three swipe screens and you can swipe three times, you know, to see the different swipe screens for different icons. You will want to read your 20 page booklet because there's 850 ideas. So you kind of have to know where something's oh located. Gosh. And then you'll, uh, when you see where it's located, then you'll go to that icon and press a button and it will start making a, a small sound. You'll want to turn it down so that your body feels the sound. You're not going to have that sound reverberating in your ears all day long. That would be very irritating. So you're just going to turn the sound down so that your body will be absorbing it. So good luck on that, Mirabelle. Thank you. What's well, just uh -huh. a good starter, general? I don't have any particular health issues. Is there a general kind of jump start? you know? Yes. 
And I do tell you on the very first paragraph of the frequencies that inflammation, pain, and trauma is the best frequency set to use. Okay. And then with my experimenting, followed by parasites and then detox. So I do give okay. you a starting point That's there. great. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. great. That all mm -hmm. makes sense. All right. Okay, Linda. Yeah, so I was just going to add that the, the hollow tube uh, ear sets are the ones that Dr. McColl, I believe, said to get. And I guess you can get them on Amazon. They don't have the wire in them. Perfect. All right. See, and I didn't know. I mean, you know, sometimes you know one's bad, but you may not know ex exactly one to uh, recommend to somebody. And Dr. McCullough is usually a pretty good source. He's done lots of research. So that would be a good area to go to. If nobody else is jumping in, I'd like to jump in. Sure. <clears throat> My husband and I have been into the EMF mitigation for about five years now, beginning with our knowledge of what smart meters were doing. Oh, and uh, turns out that, you know, we live in Georgia and it turned out they were implemented all through Georgia without anyone being consulted. So we went out, we looked on the back of our house, and sure enough, we had a digital meter that was, and I was wondering why I was having such terrible headaches and felt so bad. So we pay an extra 20 bucks a month to have an old analog meter put back on our house. And that was the start of it. Then we bought an EMF meter and, and jumped into it just uh, foot, feet first. And we've got all kinds of EMF mitigation devices, everything from from, well, I've always been a rock hound, so we've always had rocks around the house, particularly oh. quartz. But um, we've got that all over the house. We have a Total Shield uh, whole house uh, Tesla that puts out uh, Schumann resonance. We've got microcurrent devices. We have a big PMF. And I just have to tell you, I love the Wave Watch. It is the easiest, easiest, easiest one to use. And it's just, uh, I love it, love it, love it. And I promote it all the time. I purposely turn up the volume to about 12 or 14 when I go out. And I go into a store and people say, what does that sound? And I go, oh, that's me. Do you want me to turn it down? And they go, well, what is that thing? I say, oh, it's my wave watch. Let me show you what it does. It's so wonderful. I have so much fun doing this. And then, you know, if it really irritates them, I turn it down. But in the meantime, I use it as a teaching opportunity. The old teacher in me just can't go away. So that's my, my little visual aid. It's an auditory aid. But this is a terrific device, Linda. We love it. And we promote it to everybody we meet. Strangers, oh my, friends, and family alike. Oh, my gosh, Lynn. That was the most fabulous idea because my problem when i had it up to 12 because i can't hear i'm deaf i just right. had it on 12 i didn't know i went into the bank and the ladies at the bank i scared them to death they thought i was going to blow up the bank they're going what is that you know they were absolutely scared to death and so i had not thought about using the wave watch the way you did as an auditory <laughs> teaching so now you're going to help me to get over my fear of having it too loud <laughs> thank, you, thank to, you if you crank it to 16 you know they can hear it, and that way you can hear it too. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. I appreciate it. Thanks. And uh, also for that feedback, like I said when I mentioned to start, there's so much on EMFs. There's no way I could cover all of those ideas in just sure. a short period of time. So, uh, you know, the fact that you've done that, and I didn't even mention, you know, uh, the meters on the house. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, that, you know, that, they're putting up cell towers without our permission. They're, you know, it just goes on and on and on. So thank you for that update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about um, I heard from someone else who also purchased. I told them to uh, the Wave Watch um, that you were going to be adding frequencies and that it would be done via a SIM card. Yes. And that's going to take me a while because, I mean, I worked for uh, several years to get 850 frequencies on. Uh -huh. But when we update, when I do get, you know, enough that it's worth your effort to buy a different SIM card, you know, I will let you know. And I'm, at this point in time, it, I have been told by my prototype uh, developer that I could probably fit 100 more frequencies on. So, um, and that's the limit of what the watch will hold. So I'm being very careful and picking those out, you know. So 
Uh, it, it might take me another six months or something to make some decision on those. And if you have any ideas, I've had several people that emailed and did ask for more combos because the combos are easier to run. They're everything included. And that was a good idea. And if you have any other ideas, uh, you can just uh, shoot me an email um, or uh, you know, see if you can contact me uh, if you have ideas to add to that SIM card. Or else make a bunch of different SIM cards for different areas so people can choose which ones they purchase. Um, probably not on that. The SIM cards are a little bit hard for people to put in and out. And I've even had people push them in so hard, <laughs> you know, that it goes inside the wave watch. So I have to be very careful, yeah. you know, and you wouldn't want, you know, you just want them to change it and leave it so that they're not moving one in and out all the time, just for um, the longevity of the tool, probably. So every, everything has some limitations. <laughs> Yes. For is there technologically advanced people? Uh, would you have some other way besides the SIM card? To Say that again. For more technologically advanced people, would you have another way besides the SIM card uh, to add uh, frequencies? Uh, when it gets to the limit, that's about all I can do. You know, is a different SIM card. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is Janie. <clears throat> yes. Um, I don't know if this is testimonial or just something silly, maybe, but I read someplace that uh, if you put your teeth just together, don't clench them, and you can put on your wave watch or whatever, and you can feel the vibration of a frequency if you're running it. Anyway, I tried that, and I put on the EMF. Golly, I started chattering almost. <laughs> It was amazing. So I think it probably works, but you can really tear if you have that wave watch on just by putting your teeth together, you'll feel this vibration in there. And oh, that's that's the great. EMF and really set it off. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea because you know our frequencies do go through our bones. Sound frequencies go through our skin and our bones. Our bones just zip. So that's probably why you're being able to feel it in your teeth. That makes sense to me. Great idea. Is there a, uh, a frequency for Lyme's disease? Yes, and I know you're new, so is it Mirabelle? No. It is Mirabelle. Uh, I have two uh, programs I presented last week and then the week before on uh -huh. Lyme disease. And so you could go, to, I didn't even mention that this time, you could go to Facebook and uh -huh. it is recorded live. And okay, it is, uh, yes, and it will be under, um, uh, wave watch frequency fanatics and it is a special group just for this group and you can okay great mm -hmm. okay i'll join and then yeah, i can there you go then i can watch you have several of them um uploaded recorded yes. uh -huh. right and we're recording the one today on facebook awesome recording as as we speak so awesome. your voice is going to be there how's that <laughs> okay i can All handle right. it <laughs> anybody else any yeah. other comments Linda, this is Audrey. And to, Hi tag there. On, to tag on what was said before, um, to take that a little bit farther, and I like that idea of using that as a teaching opportunity, but we've had the experience where my, I had a, the wave watch, I put it into the ER when my husband was there. Of course, the doctor asked about it. And he said, oh, that was something my wife wanted me to wear and he, we didn't go in. I said, yeah, it's at sound frequencies for healing. And I actually had it set. As soon as he said what he thought it was, that's what I put on there. So yeah, you know, take it into the doctor's office. If you think they might be open, then start a conversation. You know, this like, you know, this is a teaching. Um, I put it on Facebook. Um, my biggest um, testimonial is that I had a cyst in my breast uh, that my breast cancer surgeon found and went back one week later for an ultrasound. And in the meantime, of course, I was running breast cysts on there. It was gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, I had the proof of the surgeon wow. finding the ultrasound saying, it's nothing there. <laughs> wow. And so, oh, yeah, Audrey, I think you emailed me that testimony and I'm so thankful that you, you know, gave it live. So thank you. I think my number is up to seven women that have had breast lumps go away. Yeah. Well, Linda, uh, I found, found you 
after my mastectomy, after my cancer journey, then you had the, I came in and had a thermogram with you and you had me try that wave watch while I laid on the biomat. And so I thought, hmm, this is very intriguing. I couldn't, I didn't have any response to anything I had that day, but I was so intrigued by it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have get one. So I got the prototype one. Oh, <laughs> and, you've been and with my, me for a while then, yeah. <laughs> and my home organizer bought one because of mine. So yeah. And I know another friend wants to get one. So I'll put something on Facebook and somebody goes, oh, well, where's the scientific evidence? And I go, you know, and my friend that once once said, well, maybe this isn't for you, John. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's that kind of skepticism that's out there right now. But, you know, this thing works. Oh. Okay, so I do have a question, Linda, uh, or anybody sure. in the group. You know, they make these shields for your smart meters. Does anybody know whether those work or whether that's a good idea or have any recommendation on that? Because I don't want to pay $20 a month if that's what our local one charges. I don't know. You, you know, know I, I put rocks at my meter. Don't know if it's perfect, but I do have, you know, big rocks at my meter for, oh. just for that purpose. I found big pieces of stone, you know and okay. a quartz stone and I put my by my meter but does anybody have an actual tool or or product that's been made for that I have a Faraday cage for mine they cost about $50 45 to $50 and oh that's not bad and, yeah and you can use your EMF you can use the meter up there and, and see how it affects you but I um I feel better knowing that it's on there I've taken the EMF meter but I'm not sure how to read the meter. <laughs> yeah, those but, are hard. But, but the, the, it's very low, whatever with the meter on, it's very, very low. Virgil has been having his hand up for the longest time. Oh, I haven't even seen it. Virgil, hop in. Politely, very politely waiting. Very, very. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Virgil. Hop in there. <laughs> yes, now I can. Okay, uh, my thing with EMF, I've been working with this stuff for 25 years, even before it was popular, um, is the protection and the remediation of EMF is an impossible task. My view right now is to harmonize the body so that it accepts it and is able to work with it and to find the tools and supplements that allow this existence of this to cohabitate with the body. Most notably, taking being regularly focused on detoxification. Detoxification baths, making soda absent salt, sea salt. The wave watch does a very good job on the detox, detox. But in our toxic environment, my view is the operative term today is detoxification, detoxification, detoxification. That's just my personal experience. Okay, detox, detox, detox. Is that what you just said? Your your uh, connection was a little bit bad on my end, but thank uh, you. I have a ton of uh, remediation devices um, in my home, in my car, whatever. I like them because I'm, I'm a junkie, but most people can't afford all the things that I have. And I would say, the Altura, I've been using that for 25 years. While not the best, it's very appropriate. That eight dollar plug-in, you know, you've got every much you have one. It's very affordable. I have plugins I paid five hundred dollars for. But just doing the EMF watch, in my view, with the Altura at home is a great, it's a great place to be at. Okay, and we we just need to keep studying and sharing and. Um, never stop because they're adding more and more frequencies to our uh you know our world and so we're going to have to keep adding things to protect ourselves i was wondering okay. any other comments i think i am just about to wind down but anything else sorry i missed you virgil anybody else uh, i was wondering um when i do for instance i do the hormones all the way through um i get uh, almost like i'm drugged whereas when I do uh, joints, uh, I feel like singing. 
when I do. So these kinds of responses, um, are you supposed to be, is, is, more, is one more curative than another? Or this is just the response to the body. Could you tell us more? Uh, everybody's a little bit different. I've had some people that like have had knee pain go away and they didn't really feel anything. And then somebody else, they said their, their knees got ice cold. It was like they had an ice pack on them. But then the next day their knee pain was gone. So I can't say a yes or no, or everybody's the same, different responses. And hopefully if you have a response, that means something is happening within your body and changing. So any response means something's changing. Usually it does. That's, you know, just the okay. feedback from people. A response is good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. can, I have a, can I have a quick one? Yes. Actually, it's two little ones. Um, do you recommend the Biomat or any other devices that you recommend? Yes, I forgot all about that. See, I said there's so much stuff out there. I have a Biomat in my office, and that's because it is uh, wired so that it doesn't have EMFs in it. And it's 25 pounds of amethyst crystal. And so you're laying on crystal. What could get better? I love stones. So yes, right, okay. favorite. And the second one is um, they just, they put a, a 5G near my granddaughter's school. So I'm just wondering, you know, my daughter's like, oh, maybe I need to move schools now. I mean, how far away from one of those do you think you have to be? How dangerous are the towers? Uh, I'm not an expert, but I've heard a mile. You know, wow. somebody else might have something different. Virgil, you got an idea? I've heard a mile. Wow. So what you can do for, you know, at this point is give your daughter a really special necklace, make a really big thing out of, oh, I hope you wear this every day, you know, or right. give her a bracelet or some earrings, give her something to take. Yeah. Right, that's good. Her cell phone, you know. Right. Maybe even a belt. They have belts with stones on them. Give her something yeah. that she can wear. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amanda. Yes. With the children, I think I get a belt or something to wear around the waist so that this, any type of harmonizing device will be useful. Um, I think there are any number of them, but muscle testing for the one that works for each person's body is really good. If not, the general ones, he wants to but trying to it, it's impossible. It's just not practical in our civilization. What is it practical? I, I'm having an extremely hard time hearing you. What is it practical? It's not practical in our environment. Um, like I said, harmonizing the body to be able to accept work and harmonize those frequencies is, uh, is a way of interfacing with it and getting along with it and block it. It's too hard to block. Um, so with a child putting something around their waist, I find I have a harmonizing device that I like and I put on my waist with a little strain there 24-7. It doesn't get in the way. I sleep with it. It's very, it's very nice, very useful. And okay. uh, there are many tools. All right, many tools. Okay, I, uh, I see it's 1111. <laughs> I'm a kind of a numbers person sometimes. So 1111 is a good time, but uh, kind of winding down. Anybody else? Got time for one more comment. Okay, thank you for joining today. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank, thank you. you for, thank you for your help and, and giving some testimonies. Appreciate thank it so much. Thank you so much. So much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. So we'll stop recording now and I'll see you next week. See you next week. All, All right. right.